She's uh, already spent two and a half years in prison since May 2018. Um, you know, the charges that were brought against her and the actual guilty verdicts are all falling under this very vaguely worded uh, terrorism law. And she was tried in a court that was established to try terrorism cases. So what they found her guilty of were charges such as inciting change in the kingdom or trying to trying to upend and change the kingdom's uh, laws and you know charges that basically all fall back to her peaceful nonviolent activism which includes long standing calls for the right for women to drive before that was granted and the right for women to travel abroad and obtain a passport without the permission of a father or a husband which was something that was only changed last year when she was in prison um, and she was among a group of very prominent women's uh, rights activists in Saudi Arabia who were speaking out for these changes before they were legal and who were detained around the same time in 2018. And why does this case matter, especially in terms of what it says about Saudi Arabia today? Right. I mean, this case really came to symbolize and signify all the dual dualities that are happening in the kingdom under Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. On the one hand, he's ushered in all these reforms that activists had long pushed for, that Western allied countries and governments had long wanted to see happening in Saudi Arabia, bringing it you know, more modern and just bringing in these changes that needed to happen in the 21st century. But at the same time, unleashing this sweeping crackdown on dissent and on the very reformers who had peacefully called for these changes, um, sending a very strong message that these changes are coming from the top down and are not being pushed from the bottom, and that changes that are being called for by the Saudi public are not going to bring results. The changes come from the top. And I think that was a very clear message in the arrest of Lojane and other female activists just uh, months or even weeks before women were allowed to drive finally in 2018. What is her family saying? I mean, her family has been extremely outspoken, unlike other families of other activists who've been pressured into silence. They've remained steadfast and outspoken from, you know, Europe and America, where some of her brothers and sisters reside. And they have said, look, this is absolute hypocrisy to charge her um, as a terrorist or under terror laws when she's an activist and hypocrisy to try her and convict her on charges of agitating and pushing for changes that um, the kingdom is touting publicly, you know, to the West as something to hail and to commend. And so that really is kind of the, the you know, the duality of what's happening now. Aya, thank you. That's Aya Batrawi of the Associated Press reporting for us from Dubai.